Good afternoon. I'm Leanne Wagner. I'm with the uh, Ministry of Human Services, and uh, I'm working on the uh, development of a social policy framework for Alberta. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, what is the social policy framework, how we've gone about creating this document, and some of the tools we've used and some of the results we've seen from that. So first, what is a social policy framework? Uh, well, like all frameworks, it's a document that's intended to uh, guide and shape behavior. And the Premier often talks about the social policy framework as being a blueprint uh, for the future of social policies and programs here in Alberta. So we have framed it as this will be a tool that will coordinate uh, the action of the various ministries involved in social policy that extend beyond human services, that includes health, education, tours and parks and rec, municipal affairs, Aboriginal relations, I'm going to forget one, and I'll be reminded later what it is. Uh, it's also intended to clarify what is Alberta's position on social policy. What do we think, why do we have social policy? What do we think it's supposed to do? Uh, what do we, how do we think it helps people or helps uh, communities, governments, and actors uh, come together to resolve some issues? Uh, we also see it as an important influencing tool. Uh, it's a tool that helps shape behavior, not just of uh, the government of Alberta, but also of municipalities, uh, and our partners who work uh, in social policy areas, like municipalities, like our nonprofit and voluntary sector, uh, and like some of our other delivery partners. Uh, before I go into like why, you know, what do we do in the social policy framework? Because we get asked a lot, can you tell us about your process? What did you learn? What are you learning? What are you doing? How'd you do that? Uh, how'd you get? How were you allowed to have a wiki? How did you do that? So. Uh, I just really want to say one of the important things I think for understanding any engagement activity is understanding the context in which it operates. And we operate within a very particular context. Our ministry uh, itself and also the government of Alberta how it's approaching uh, public engagement and dialogue with its citizens. And so context is, I think, is often the most important thing. You know, why I, you know, uh, Tracy explained the context for how they came together to create those coalitions that may or may not be true for your situation. Uh, so for me, it's always really important uh, piece to understand the context. And so for us, our context was that there hasn't been a social policy framework in over 30 years in Alberta. Uh, the last document was called Caring and Responsibility. It was done under the Getty government. Uh, and it was, called, it was very influential in shaping particularly reforms made to income support because it emphasized the concept of self-reliance. It also was very influential in shaping how government moved towards uh, community-based service delivery uh, and the huge amount of contracting out that now occurs, particularly in social services. Uh, so that document was very influential for about 10 years and then it kind of went away. Uh, and the government turned its attention to developing frameworks in water uh, and in energy and in economy and in education uh, and did not do one in social policy until Premier Redford took office and suggested maybe it's a good time for us to take a hard look at this. Uh, the other piece is that's probably connected to the fact why we don't, why we haven't had a framework for 30 years, is that uh, particularly in social services, uh, there is a history and a culture between us and our delivery partners of distrust and anger. Uh, distrust about our motives and our actions. Why'd you do what you did? Uh, you're not listening to us and generally anger that our programs do not help people. I, I mean, I'm sure we can have a long conversation about whether how that's true or untrue, but the fact was that when we came up to doing this engagement, that was a reality for us, that we had a significant number of partners who simply didn't trust government, and particularly government when it talked about social policy, because his experience was quite negative uh, in that dialogue. The other uh, big context piece for us is that we were leading this on behalf of government. It wasn't intended to be a framework for human services. It's intended to be a framework for the entire government of Alberta. Uh, but we in human services were asked to lead it, obviously, because we have an interest in social policy given our mandate for social services. Uh, and one of the things we realized is that we had a huge stakeholder group. We have over 7,000 contracted agencies. Uh, we are stakeholder list goes over 50 pages. Uh, so we have a very diverse group of stakeholders and we also were working with ministries 
who had diverse set of stakeholders as well. Maybe not as many. Education, you know, has about, I think they have three or four big ones. Uh, health, you know, a different thing altogether. So we had to take that into uh, account about how do we get all these people, all these groups, into a room to have a conversation about the social policy framework. So how do we do that? Well, we thought about our big piece was network mobilization. We knew uh, we were a team of eight <coughs> that was asked to create the social policy framework, and we were given one year. Um, our minister, Dave Hancock, when he took a uh, position of Ministry of Human Services, uh, he has a reputation for having lots of big conversations that go on for a long time. Um, and he felt that uh, he might, I think he, he would describe it as, it'd be nice if I uh, finished off an engagement in the portfolio in which I started the engagement. Uh, so <laughs> so he, uh, we had one year uh, from start to finish, from when he was given the mandate until when we could finish it. Uh, so when you look at that, we realized, you know, we can't do this on our own. We have to go and ask for help. And so we deliberately went to our child and family services authorities uh, and our persons with developmental disability boards, our family and community support services, which are associated with municipalities, and said, we're going to have a community conversation about social policy. You all have a mandate for community engagement. You're all part of our ministry. We would like your help. And they... Uh, listened to us, fortunately, and said, yes, how can we help? Uh, we would not have been able to have that conversation without their leadership. We also knew that we had to have community conversations that, uh, while our minister was very interested in how media and how digital media could be used to engage people, that's not the only way to reach out to folks. And he was also very interested in how are we going to reach out to the homeless, uh, kids in care, uh, women who are in women's shelters, uh, people who don't often get the opportunity to participate in public engagement. Uh, so we knew uh, that Leanne and her team going out and talking to a group of homeless people was probably not all that useful. It would be a bit like, hi, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Uh, not a helpful conversation. So we then asked all of our contracted agencies, will you have a conversation with your staff, with your board members, with your volunteers, and in particular with the recipients or participants of your service? And they said yes. Uh, we also, in recognition that many times there's a burden for marginalized people, uh, for anyone actually, to participate in a community engagement activity, uh, that we gave them a grant of $750 to host those conversations, to pay for childcare, to pay for transportation, to pay for the room, to pay for the food, to pay for whatever they felt they needed. Uh, we have run through three pots of that money. Uh, we started off with $50,000. Uh, we cleared it out in about a month. Uh, we had to go back and say we need some more because the take up was so much. We also put together an online platform that on that, because our minister is very interested in how uh, digital media and the web can engage citizens uh, in policy making. And so he asked for a wiki and we said, yes, Minister, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then went back to the office and said, uh, what, is, what, is the, what are we going to do with the wiki? Like, what is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> We've said that to him, so I can say that to you. Uh, and, he, <laughs> so, uh, and he wanted a really true wiki. Because we said, what do you mean, like Wikipedia wiki? And he said, yeah, that's what I mean. I want a wiki. Uh, so we agreed, to said, sure, let's get that, put that together. And so we have uh, the government of Alberta's first ever wiki where we loaded on uh, the work that we had done already with the social policy. We had put some words to paper and posted on there and said to people, edit away. You can change those words. You can contribute to someone else's words. You can comment on our words. You can comment on other people's words. You can write a blog. You can take a survey. You can send us an email. Uh, you're welcome to do whatever you like here. It's, an, it's just another place to meet and have a conversation. Uh, and the other big piece is that our ministry, and also the government of Alberta, but in particular our ministry has over 7,000 staff. And those staff work all across the province of Alberta in very diverse uh, portfolios, ranging from childcare to business engagement uh, to labour training uh, to child intervention. And they, have, they live in their communities, they have relationships in their communities, uh, and they have a perspective on social policy. And we asked for them to, one, go out and have conversations, which they did. 
And we also said, we're interested in your voice in this conversation. You have a unique set of expertise that we want to hear from. Uh, so they have their own private wiki uh, that they're, they, don't, they can choose to participate as a citizen or they can choose to participate as a staff person. It's entirely up to them. Uh, and if we had another opportunity in a longer time, I could talk to you about some of the learnings from that because that was a whole other set of learnings about staff engagement. So in the first phase, uh, we broke it down into where are we going, vision and outcomes, and how will we make decisions together, the principles. So we broke the conversation up uh, because we wanted to give sufficient time for people to talk. Uh, so in the summer, we focused on those first two pieces. And what I will say about we started in the summer, and when we started on this, uh, people said to us, oh, you can't have a public engagement in the summer. You can't do it. It's wrong. Albertans are camping or doing something. They won't want to talk to you. And so when we pursued that line of thinking with people, they would say, really what we learned was that there's only one week in October that you can actually engage with Albertans because every other time they're busy. And so we just thought, well, this is, we, we're just going to go because we're not, we can't do it a week in October. We have a lot of time, a lot of people, we got to go. Uh, so we spent the summer on that. And then in the second part, we focused on strategies and roles and responsibilities. And we're engaged in that conversation right now until November 16th. Uh, so what we had was we gave people discussion kits, uh, just as many of the other partners here have done. We had a discussion kit. Uh, but what we told people is if you don't like our questions, change them. Uh, but just try to stay in the field of play that we're in. Uh, we understand that we don't talk the way that someone maybe with mental health or a person with a learning disability is going to talk about vision and outcomes. We get that. Uh, but you, uh, as a staff person in that agency, know how to translate that. Use your expertise to help us here. Uh, so they did, and we had feedback. We had videos. We had poems. We had drawings. Uh, we had people stay in within our guidelines. Uh, we had others who didn't. But they would tell us, I changed your question to this which is totally fine by us. We had the wiki. Uh, we did use social media, particularly our politicians, our MLA partners, use social media. Uh, we, as uh, the Ministry of Human Services, used it in a very limited way. Uh, but our minister is, uh, I think I read somewhere, or someone told me he's like in the top five of MLAs who tweets or uh, Facebook. Um, so, uh, he uh, would want to, just to show you the power of that, particularly if I think if you use it in a really smart way, is we noticed early on that we weren't getting a lot of participation from Calgary. And so he tweeted uh, Mayor Nineshi and said, hey, I'm having this conversation. Where are you? And within, uh, he is, uh, that mayor has 60,000 followers. Within minutes of him then resending it out, we saw our numbers on Calgary go up. And that happened pretty consistently where we would, uh, he would go and target a particular uh, person in his Rolodex who was on Twitter and ask them to help. We had blogs uh, where ordinary citizens, we had uh, comments, people could comment on those blogs that they wished, and we also had um, submissions. I want to just, in terms of that piece about distrust and anger, what I want to highlight for you is that uh, this was, uh, we have, I think we have moved, successfully moved the barometer, uh, particularly for our ministry and our relationship. Um, there's an advocacy group here in Alberta called Public Interest Alberta. Or is anyone here from there? Uh, they, uh, they can sometimes, they do their job very well, right? And so they can sometimes frustrate MLAs. And uh, they called us and said, we want to participate in this conversation. We said, absolutely. You're welcome to do that. Uh, so they asked if they could write a blog. And we said, for sure, but we, get to, we have to look at it to make sure it's consistent with our guidelines. But you're welcome to do that. Uh, and he, they wrote a blog and they posted it on a Government of Alberta website. So for us, it's a fairly significant move forward. I'm sure for lots of people, I, I know our consultant who was working with us was like, really? And we were like, yep, it's a big deal um, that we moved there. So. <laughs> It is a big deal. I don't want me to sound glib about it, but it is a big deal in terms of building trust and showing that you're open to the conversation. Um, so these are our numbers uh, from our first phase. Uh, we had over 17,000 people go to that platform. Um, 5,800 people completed a survey. 
Uh, we had over 4,900 community conversation participants in 255 community conversations. You have to remember this is in, two, in three months period in the summer. Uh, we had over 131 library submissions. So these are people sending us their own reports, whatever they wanted to send us. We took it all in. They said, you've got to read this report. It'll help you understand social policy. We also had over 104 wiki entries. While that may seem low, it's important to remember that they were really contributing on four pages. So if you think about a Word document with four pages, imagine 100 changes on it. Uh, and so there was, and it was tremendously good feedback that was very helpful to us. And we used some of those words and some of their phrases in the next iteration of the framework that was posted up. So that people, and we were very deliberate about that, so people could see, we heard you. Uh, we, want, we want your feedback, we value it. So there are many times there are words that we purposely chose that we saw on the wiki that we kept. Some we did not. And this just gives you a sense of all the conversations where they were. They were not just in Edmonton and Calgary and Red Deer. Uh, they were all over the place. And so in terms of success factors, uh, for us, the big success factor was that we had leadership that was interested in trying new things and was comfortable in trying new things. Uh, we have a minister who's really comfortable in public dialogue, and we had a deputy who was also very comfortable in saying, let's have a conversation. Let's just talk. Let's try to figure this out. Uh, we asked for help. I think sometimes when government does engagement, we are so keen on managing the whole thing from beginning to end uh, that we, people feel managed in that conversation. And we thought, well, we can't do it. We have to invite people in, and we have to ask them for help. And in return, they recognize that we see they have an expertise and something to bring to the table. Because they could talk to people that we couldn't talk to. I am not a skilled facilitator talking to kids in care. I'm not. Uh, but there are other people who are really good at that. And they often work with them. So go have that conversation with them and share with us what they said. Uh, we built on our existing and we leveraged our existing networks uh, and relationships. And we also, uh, in every opportunity, demonstrated that we were here to listen. Uh, we uh, invited ML MLAs could have a conversation, but they often didn't lead it. Uh, we would facilitate those for them, and they would participate as individuals in those conversations. And in some cases, uh, regard in the South, where there aren't uh, very many government MLAs right now, uh, those MLAs were invited to participate in the conversation as well. And that we knew that in order for us to overcome that distrust and anger, uh, that we had to build transparency. Uh, so every letter that's sent, for example, every letter that's sent to our minister uh, on the social policy framework is posted on that website. So people can see what did the Alberta Union of Public Employees have to say about the social policy framework? What did Alberta Health Sciences Association have to say about this? What did the police commission of Alberta, have, the chairs of all those commissions, have to say about social policy? What did the Unitarian Church of Edmonton have to say? Uh, and the curious thing about that is that uh, no matter how small the submission was, if you go to that site, you will notice that there are 100 reads on every single submission, at a minimum 100 reads. So Albertans are very curious about what other Albertans are doing uh, and like to see what they're doing. And so we had a lot of folks who would just go and check out what are other people saying. And that in of itself is a form of engagement in terms of raising awareness and getting people involved. And so you still have an opportunity to participate in the social policy framework. We are open for engagement till November 16th. As I said, there are, so if you're interested in social policy, here's your opportunity. Uh, and I encourage you to you know, go to that site and uh, complete the survey. There's two surveys. Uh, and look at the wiki, and if you have material to submit, we're happy to have you do that. Uh, read some of the blogs, or if you're interested in blogging, just get in touch with us. We're happy to, to hear your voice and make sure your voice is included. Thank you.